So I never got into the Shadow Hunter, not Shadow Hunter. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am going to be doing my 2022 anticipated reads. I have a few books that I'm really anticipating for next year. It's a short list. I like to keep it short because I feel like if I make a long, long list, then it's overwhelming and it's hard to keep track of. But I did make sure to just list a few of my like set ones that I know I'm for sure going to buy. So the first book, the most important book that I have coming out next year is Legendborn number two, Blood Marked by Tracy Dion. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I was obsessed with Legendborn when it came out. Even before it came out, I was obsessed and then I read it and I was even more obsessed. And Legendborn is a, about a girl who has lost her mother and she ends up going to this summer college program where she goes to a party and she sees this wizard magic thing happening. And she has a spark of memory where she realizes that for some reason this magic is connected to her mother's death. And so she decides that she's going to investigate. So she finds out that this magic is tied to the secret society within the school and she decides to infiltrate it. And from there she learns about this whole new world that her mother may or may not have been involved in that she never knew about. And it's such a good story. I loved it. I loved the characters and learning about this magic in this world. And I love the historical ties that that they add in. They're not like, oh, this magic just came out of nowhere. Like, no, this magic has history. It's been going on for years. So I really enjoyed that. I'm so hyped for this second book to come out. I'm a little nervous because I don't know what's going to happen after that ending of the first book, but I'm hyped to check it out and come back and just see what's going to happen. So I'm so, so hyped for that one. I know it comes out July 26th of next year, so I'm gonna just take that as a late birthday gift for me because I am a July baby and hope for the best. <laughs> the next book I have on this list is the sequel to All of Us Villains. The Y'all, I'm also obsessed with this book. I read it, I got an arc from Tor before it even came out and I read that so quickly and it was so, so good. Oh my goodness, my next obsession after Legendborn. And the fact that I'm already hyped for book two, we don't even have a name, a cover, a release date, anything for it, but I'm ready to have it in my hands and just read the next part of that story because it's so, so good. In case you don't know, All of Us Villains is about a little town where in this world, there are two types of magic. There are, I think it's like common magic that exists and then there's high magic. And so high magic is dying out. They've used all of it up, honestly. But this tiny town that we meet in the story has the last like remnants of high magic there that exists and they've managed to keep it a secret from the rest of the world. And so the way they've decided to handle who gets this high magic is a competition that has been taking place for honestly so many years I don't even remember the number. So every like 20 years or so they host this competition where seven of the founding families come together and they pick their champions and these champions fight to the death and the last person standing their family gets the high magic for the next 20 years when i tell you this story was brutal it was brutal there were moments where i would feel sympathy for this one character or bad for something that happened to this other character and then they turn right around Around and they would just do something that would be like oh yeah these these are villains you, you really can't you can't forget that they don't let you so it's it's just such a good story meet five of the champions in the first book you get each of their perspectives hopefully in the next book I hope we get the rest of the champions perspective because I feel like that would be interesting but I'm not sure I guess it just depends on how they plan the next book 
to go but this story was just so good and so enticing like Monet was reading it too she read it about a week before me and we were both just texting back and forth about what was going on at these characters and what they were doing and honestly it was a it was a really good bonding moment for me and her but also it made us just want to get our hands on the second book even more because we know it's just going to be even better, hopefully. So, yeah, that was me raving about that. But you should definitely check out the first one because the second one probably is going to come out with a bang. So, yeah. All right, and the next book I'm really, really hyped about. So this year, I became a big Emily Henry fan. I read Beach Read. I read People We Meet on Vacation. I love them both. I think Beach Read is probably my favorite book of 2021 because it was probably the first book of this year that I really felt an emotional connection to it and its characters. Like I was sitting there crying with Sis when she was reading those letters at the end. So her next book comes out in March of next year and it's Book Lovers. I'm gonna look up the synopsis because honestly I don't I read it, but I don't remember it. So Nora Stevens' life is books. She's read them all, and she's not the type of that type of heroine. Not the plucky one, not the laid-back dream girl, and especially not the sweetheart. In fact, the only people Nora is a heroine for are her clients, for whom she lands enormous deals as a cutthroat literary agent, and her beloved little sister Libby, which is why she agrees to go to Sunshine Falls, North Carolina, for the month of August, when Libby begs her for her sister's trip away. With visions of a small town transformation for Noara, who she's convinced needs to become the heroine in her own story, but instead of picnics in meadows or run-ins with a handsome country doctor or bulging four-armed bartender, Nora keeps bumping into Charlie Lastra, a bookish brooding editor from back in the city. It would be a meet-cute if not for the fact that they've met many times and it's never been cute. If Nora knows she's not an ideal heroine, Charlie knows he's nobody's hero. But as they are thrown together again and again, in a series of coincidences no editor worth their salt would allow, what they discover might just unravel the carefully crafted stories they've written about themselves. Oh my gosh, that sounds so good. I'm so here for it. I'm excited because I, if I love this book, I'm pretty sure Emily Henry is going to be a new favorite author of all time because again her first two books were just amazing i love the characters i related to them on so many different levels the next uh book i have on this list is book three of the inheritance games trilogy series i can't remember if there's going to be another one after that but uh by jennifer lynn barnes so that is my queen she's one of my favorite authors I love her natural series. I really enjoyed the Inheritance Games. I haven't read the sequel yet, the second book. It came out this year and I have it. I just haven't read it yet. But I'm already hyped for the third book because <laughs> that's just how I work. It's called, I think, The Final Gambit. I think it comes out in the fall of next year. I could be wrong though, so don't quote me on that. But I'm so excited for this because I know it's going to continue on with the story of Avery and the Hawthorne brothers. So I'm excited to just keep living in that world because they're so cute. The next one I have on this list is This Woven Kingdom by Tahara Mati. I never got into the Shatter Me uh, phase of life. I tried, was did not hit me. I think if I had picked it up when it was like just releasing in that momentum, I may have loved it more than I had when I picked it up after the whole series was over. So I want to give her another try and I want to start from the beginning so I want to catch her when she first starts a series and see how it goes so that's why I want to try her newest fantasy book that's coming out so it comes out February 1st so this is a synopsis to all the world Elise is a disposable servant not the long-lost heir to an ancient Jinn kingdom forced to hide in plain sight the crown prince Cameron has heard the prophecies foretelling the death of his king but he could never have imagined that the servant girl with the strange eyes, the girl he can't put out of his mind, would one day soon uproot his kingdom and the world. That's all we got, but that sounds really interesting. And uh, since I really loved An Ember in the Ashes that included Jin, no spoilers, but they're included in that. I want to give Tahara Mafi's Jin a try and see if I could enjoy them. Also, I like the idea of 
a plot where the underdogs, like this this group of people that have been placed into servitude, come in and try to usurp the throne and or the empire and like break it down. So this sounds like it's gonna be one of those stories. So I'm I'm here for it. The next book that I have. So Tessa Bailey is another author that I've really gotten into this year. I really loved Fixer Up. I actually really, really, really loved It Happened One Summer because it was so good, so cute. So I want to pick up her next book, uh, Hook, Line, and Sinker, which is the companion novel for It Happened One Summer. And it follows the main character from that book, um, her sister. So I'm here for it. it looks cute and I really love the sister in the first book so I'm excited to get her perspective in the second book. I'm gonna go ahead and find the synopsis to read to you all. So King Crab Fisherman Fox Thornton has a reputation as a sexy carefree flirt. Everyone knows he's a guaranteed good time in bed and out and that's exactly how he prefers it until he meets Hannah Ballinger. She's immune to his charm and looks but she seems to enjoy his personality and wants to be friends bizarre but he likes her too much to risk a fling so platonic pals it is now hannah's in town for work crashing in fox's spare bedroom she knows he's a notorious ladies man but they're definitely just friends in fact she's nursing a hopeless crush on a colleague and fox is just the person to help with her lackluster love life armed with a few tips from westport's resident casanova hannah sits out to catch her co-worker's eye yet the more time she spends with fox the more she wants him instead. As the line between friendship and flirtation begins to blur, Hannah can't deny she loves everything about Fox, but she refuses to be another notch on his bedpost. Living with his best friend should have been easy, except now she's walking around in a towel, sleeping right across the hall, and Fox is fantasizing about waking up next to her for the rest of his life. And man overboard. He's fallen for her, hook, line, and sinker. Helping her flirt with another guy is pure torture, but maybe if Fox can tackle his inner demons and show Hannah's he's all in, she'll choose him instead. So that sounds amazing. I loved Fox and Hannah from the previous book, so I'm excited to see how their story goes overall. So the next one that I have on this list is You Truly Assumed by Layla Sabrine. So I chose this one personally because this cover is so gorgeous. Let's see, is it going to? I don't know if you got you guys can see that but I really love this cover and so that's what kind of caught my interest and then when I read the synopsis it just sounded so good to me so uh, let's see in this compelling and thought-provoking debut novel after a terrorist attack rocks the country and anti-islamic sentiment stirs three black Muslim girls create a space where they can sh shatter assumptions and share truths Sabria has her whole summer planned out in color-coded glory but those plans go out the window after a terrorist attack near her home when the terrorist is assumed to be Muslim and Islamist phobia grows Sabria turns to her online journal for comfort you truly assumed was never meant to be anything more than an outlet, but the blog goes viral as fellow Muslim teens around the country flock to it and find solace and a sense of community. Soon, two more teens, Zakat and Farah, join Bree to run You Truly Assumed, and the three quickly form a strong friendship. But as the blog's popularity grows, so do the pushback and hateful comments. When one of them is threatened, the search to find out who is behind it all begins and their friendship is put to the test, when all three must decide whether to shut down the blog and lose what they worked for or take a stand and risk everything to make their voices heard. I don't know, this just really sounded like it's going to be a really good story to me, so I'm really hyped for it to get here and to check it out. And the last uh, book I have on this list is the next Jennifer L. Armentrout book, uh, The War of Two Queens, which is the fourth book in her From Blood and Ash series. I have been enjoying it so far. I will say the third one, I didn't enjoy it as much as the previous two, but I still enjoyed it enough that I'm willing to pick up the next book and see where she's going. I think this fourth book will decide whether I continue on or not with her series. So. I'm gonna add that into the list. So my camera's about to die. So I'm gonna hurry up and get through this ending and 
we can go. So thank you all so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Let me know down below um, some of your anticipated books of next year so I can maybe add them to my list and check them out. Um, if you like the video, please like it down below. If you have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave all that in the comment section down below. And uh, leave me an emoji if you don't want to say anything. That's fine too. And if you want to see more videos from me, please hit that subscribe button. You are also flowers and world full of weeds. Okay, bye.